Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to speak to this panel. Let me start by thanking the organizers for inviting us, the colleagues from UN Water and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. I'm especially pleased to take part in this high-level panel this year because 2018 represents a milestone for both migration and water. We are only days away from World Water Day, March 22, and the launch of the International Decade for Action on Water for Sustainable Development, which aims to further improve cooperation and partnership related to water. 2018 is also a very important year for migration policy, considering the ongoing negotiations for the Global Compact for Migration, the first intergovernmental agreement to address all dimensions of international migration and human mobility. In light of these developments, I would like to focus on three points based on IOM's experience and our work with states and migrants on the topic of migration, environment, and climate change related to water. Policy development complementarity of policy frameworks and the importance of comprehensive interventions. First of all, with regard to policy development, there is a need for a proactive approach, an approach that considers human mobility challenges in water governance. To promote sustainable development and effectively address the migration water nexus, global water governments must take into account two mega trends of our century, migration and climate change. IOM continues to emphasize the importance of incorporating migration in water governance and water-related issues into migration governance. This is a particularly pressing issue where climate change already impacts water resources, which in turn compel populations to migrate. We also must recognize the importance of complementarity policy frameworks. For example, the human rights framework is key for ensuring safe voluntary migration and it is applicable throughout the migration cycle. We remain committed to supporting the application of the human rights framework for water governance, including in our own WASH operations. This brings me to my final point. We propose to carry out interventions throughout the whole migration cycle in order to better manage migration due to water scarcity. First, in countries of origin, to minimize the root causes of forced and unmanaged migration as much as possible by promoting sustainable water management. Second, to help people on the move to ensure adequate wash assistance and protection for those affected and seek durable solutions. And then third, for those who are forced to move, position migration as an adaptation strategy through well-managed migration frameworks. In conclusion, the focus on migrants, their communities, and human rights can help bridge the gap between policy silos as migration draws attention to individuals, their needs, and aspirations. Along with our partners, we remain committed to supporting our member states, migrants, and host communities by responding to the challenges of the migration water nexus. I cannot emphasize enough the absolute importance of your views as you represent the highest level of our respective governments. I look forward to learning of the outcomes of this panel and to continuing our collaboration on the topic of water, governance, and migration during the International Decade for Action on Water and Beyond.